start the recording. Might as well record it. All right, so jumping right along here to a the mass of a box of pencils is about how much? Third of a gram, third of a kilogram, or third of a milligram? Third of a gram? No, that's too small. A box of pencils. You got, that's at least 10 pencils or 12 pencils. Oh, a box. Yeah, a box. So 10 of these. The third of a kilogram or third of a gram? Because you can eliminate milligram. I say kilogram. I'm saying a third is 0.33 is a third, right? Okay. Approximately. So. Here we go. So you say a third of two pounds, two thirds of a pound, that's what is that? A third of a pound, five, five, five ounces. What's a pound? 30, 16 ounces per pound? Or? So five ounces, five, six ounces. But that's about right, about a half ounce per pencil. See how my mind's always making the the uh the correlation. Yeah, I'm trying to make correlation. All right, let's see, 29, yeah, 29. Okay, so there's this this uh this table it gives you Celsius on the left, Fahrenheit on the right for comparison. But they want the answer. It's the Celsius freezing drizzle. Well, there's the word freezing. So freezing drizzle would be a zero degree Celsius. Are you sure you that gas up in the We can go back. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess not. Because we'll get a different number. I go, I go 30 degrees, and if I go back, watch what happens. I think it changes. I go, okay, 30 degrees. Is, 30 degrees Celsius is 1 per day. Then I go back, and now it's 30 degrees. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And so I could for, draw a formula because now I have, a, I have two points. So all I need is a, all I need is a slope. You know? So the slope, if I start with this is my y1, and I have 100 minus 0 over 2 itself minus 32, that's 100 over 180. That's 5 times 20, that's 9 times 20. So the 20s cancel. So my slope is 5 over 9. And then we just use the, uh, remember the points, point slope form of the equation? It's the y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Where x and y are the variables, x1 and y1 are one of the two points, and m you, you solve for five nuts. So I could I could I could put in um, I'll pick which one ever I want. I'll pick the top one as an easy one because y1 is zero, m is five over nine, and x1 is thirty-two. And so that gives me the formula y equals five. But it's not y; it's it's uh, c, and it's not x; it's f. All right. So there's my formula. C equals 5 ninths F minus 32. So if I know the Fahrenheit, I can solve, I can calculate the set of Celsius. And then if I multiply both sides by 9 fifths, and then add 32, I get the other formula. 9 fifths C plus 32 equals F. So there's the two formulas that are on the handout. This is if you know C, you can solve for F, and this is if you know F, you can solve for C. And we just arbitrarily started with this being on the Y axis and this being on the X. It doesn't really matter. It's just easier that way. I mean, it's it's just a little more work the other way, but, uh, but it'll work. It, it works both ways. So uh, while we're doing that, then. If I if I if I'm not sure without having to guess, since I know that uh, since I know I'm going to cook a ham at 300 degrees, I can just take I can say I could take the guess and go, okay, so if I want to cook at 350, then I do five ninths, and I do. A, 350 minus 32. I use the first formula to see what the Celsius would be if I was going to cook at 350. And there it is, 175. Yeah, 177. Yeah. So after a while, you, you have, nowadays banks have those signs and they blink. They blink Fahrenheit and they blink Celsius. They blink, you know. So you get you get a you get a you can kind of get a memory for it. Okay, so that's a little bit of review of algebra. 34. If I could just do it in reverse and just put in mine to get the Fahrenheit of it. Yeah, those, well, those are the two formulas that are on C temperature conversion. We, the one on the uh, right is the one we, we use the, the graph for, and the one on the left is the one we solve for. Oh, we just algebraically manipulated this one. This one. Oh, I guess I, I could have there There's the two formulas. This one's just written backwards. Okay. That's all. Instead of the F on the left, it's on the right. It doesn't really matter, does it? Okay. okay. So these are the two formulas that are given to you. By the way, while we're doing this, is there a is there a, a temperature where they're both equal? Yeah, because the 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 the, the uh, y equals x is one or f equals c, the forty five degree line in slope one that we've run through here. So here's one hundred one hundred. Here's zero zero. If I connect them, this is the line F equals C. So they cross. So 
there's, there's a place for F equals D on the blue line. So all you have to do is take either one of these and just change the letter, change this to an F or change that to a C. So what do we get? If F equals C, then I can just write this. So I'm going to F equals 5 ninths F minus You know what's easier to, easier to do is just to multiply both sides by 9 fifths. And then you get F minus 32. That's easier. That's easier. I multiply both sides by 9 fifths. So this cancels. <laughs> I don't need that fraction. And then I subtract uh, I subtract F, so I get 4 fifths F equals minus 32, right? Subtract F from both sides. That's five fifths. So nine fifths is four fifths. And then multiply by five fourths. So that cancels. So you got F equals minus 40. So at, this is the point negative 40, negative 40. How about that? Numerically, that's when they're equal. <laughs> We wouldn't experience that unless we were in Antarctica or someplace like that. Right? Um, and probably even cold. I'm coming here. That's why I'm here. Amen. I'll agree with that. Mm -hmm. All right, 44. So you see, they, they give us both formulas. You see the ones we generated? Mm -hmm. And if they don't give them to you, you got them, you got them on the handout. All right, so I want to change minus 35 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit, so I'm going to use the one on the right. Because I know Celsius, so I'm going to plug in numerically minus 35. So that'll be um, 9 fifths. By the way, 9 fifths is 1.8, right? <laughs> Hope you don't have to make me write 9 over 5. 9 over 5 is 1.8, right? times, and that'll be negative 35. And you guys know the difference between a negative sign and a minus sign. I think we already talked about that. And then plus 32. So be negative 31. How about that? There's no round on It's an exact number. Okay. So that's all you got to do with these is just figure out which, which one you're going to use. So for this one, let's see. Yeah, for this one, we want we have we're given Fahrenheit. We want to use the one on the left. And we'll solve this for Celsius. So now our five ninths is not a, a terminating decimal. It's point five 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 five. So I write five divided by nine times uh, the quantity F, which is thirteen minus thirty two. Don't forget to use the fresh sheet. And the rounding up to the nearest tenth will be negative ten point six. Okay. Uh, Forty-seven zero degrees Celsius. Do I really have to to use the formula? What's the answer? Thirty-two. If I use the formula, it would be the one on the right. And if I put in C equals zero, then that's zero. So zero plus 32 is 32. Sometimes there are the most straightforward ones you forget and you start doing the calculation and you go, oh, why don't I do that? <laughs> yeah. All right, so we know that minus 41 or minus 40 equals minus 40. So this is going to be close. Let's see how close it is. So we're going to use the one on the left again. So th this time I just do second entry, because it's the same formula. And instead of 13, I plug in negative 41. So there it is, to the nearest tenth, yeah, negative 40.6. <coughs> We expect it to be pretty close. And then number 40. 
53. Let's see, what are they going to do for us here? Uh, so this is one where there's a whole bunch of numbers. I mean, you got 14 numbers, right? Well, 16 numbers, including the maximums and minimums. So the way they tell us to read this is the green arrow represents the daily maximum. And the blue arrow represents the daily minimum. And they're given in Celsius. So these are temperatures in Celsius. And it wants to determine the degrees of Fahrenheit for the minimum on Wednesday. So we got a whole bunch of distractors. We go to Wednesday, the minimum is 20.2 Celsius. We want it to Fahrenheit. Okay. So 20.2 Celsius, they don't give me the formula anymore. So I got to use the one that would be the, the one on the bottom. So it'll be nine fifths, so 1.8. Times uh, 20.2 uh, plus 32 to the nearest hundredth. Now 68.36. So you know it was a tenth before. Now it's a nearest hundredth. Now if your answer comes out with a only one decimal place, or even if it's an integer, you don't have to put the extra zeros. It'll accept it. You know what I mean? Like if we had calculated 68.7, that's that would have been the answer. We wouldn't have to write 68.7. It won't be. It won't mark it wrong unless it only asks for one decimal place. There's a lot of times that I'll get an answer wrong and then I'll go, oh, decimal places, and I go to I guess I might have missed it. So if you had up to 57. Mary, you said you had to Okay, so now we're going to go back to mass. You got 14 grams of salt, 40 grams of baking soda are poured into 440 milliliters of water. What's the total mass of the mixture? Okay, so I can add the first two, 14 plus 40. And what else do I have to add? 40, 440 milliliters of water. Yeah, but how many grams is that? So you remember we talked about it. It's on the very first table, very first line. <laughs> One milliliter of water equals how many grams? One. One gram. So. It'd be 440. So that you were right. So the answer is 494. Now, if it was some other liquid, some acid or something that had a different density, that it might be slightly different than one milliliter per or one gram per milliliter. But they'd have to tell us that. We, we couldn't guess that. All right. So now we're changing kilograms to tons. This is. This is where the dimensional analysis. Uh, you can do these by inspection, or you can do them uh, using the uh, dimensional analysis. It turns out if you, in these simple ones where there's only one one change or one dimension to another. It's either going to be a multiplication or a division because the unit fractions, one of the one of the uh, quantities has a one in front of it. So it just depends on where the other one goes. If it if it's in a numerator, it's a multiplication. If it's in a denominator, it's a division, whether it's a decimal or not. So I'll show you what I mean. We we have seven point uh, four kilograms. We want to change that to a metric ton. Well, the unit fraction I'm going to use is one ton is a thousand kilograms. So it turns out to be a division. So these are equal, right? They don't they don't give us the unit fraction on on the handout. They in the in the mass they say one t equals a thousand kilograms. So I I can use I can use it either direction, right? 
as a unit fraction. The reason I did it this way is because I want the kilograms to cancel. Turns out to be a division. So the answer is 0.0074 kilograms. I need three, move the decimal place three places to the left as I'm dividing by a thousand. Make sense? I lose any. Oh. <laughs> See, I didn't have to write tons. They they gave me the fee. <laughs> <laughs> I know my number would be correct. If I had to write the fee, I would have got it wrong. Thank you. All right. So, see, uh, number seventy-one. We're gonna we're gonna have, we're gonna come up with some more of these. This is the end of this end of this section. This is what we call a uh, well, what's it called? Just what out of my head. To, to, to balance it, it has to be an inertial system. The, the weight or the mass times the distance, the product has to be equal to the product of these two. And then, then it balances. That's the idea of a teeter totter. That's why, remember teeter totter? That's why the heavier person got the, sh the, uh, Shorter length. That way, that they could balance with the with the lighter person being farther away. Moment of inertia is what it's called. So, there's, otherwise, you get revolution. See, the moment of inertia would be zero, so there's no there's no up or down because you're effectively revolving around that fulcrum. Of course, the ground space you only go so far. But anyway. The problem here is that this is kilograms and this is grams and this is meters and that's centimeters. So I got to change them to the same thing. Right. So what I would do here is I would take eight kilograms, I would make that 8,000 grams. I'm going to do it as gram centimeters. So this would be 300 centimeters. Because they want grams and this is centimeters. So I just change these two to match those two. And so that has to be equal to 600 centimeters times x. So I divide by 600 centimeters. You can see my answers in grams. So it looks like 4,000 grams. Okay. But if you see this problem, that's that's what's going on. The products have to match. So that's essentially uh, twice the mass, right? 800, 8,000 kilograms, 4,000, or 8,000 grams and 4,000 grams. This is half the mass, but it's twice the distance. So they're going to balance. Remember what the heavyweight person always did to you? They got down on the bottom. They, they, bounced, they bounced it so that they stayed up in the air. Hang it on to that. Hang it on to do that. All right, so that's it for that section. We're just now we're going to go to the next section, which is. Seven four, which is dimensional analysis, which we we already started a little bit of this. So th that's the first thing they do is make sure we understand the definition of what we're doing here. Uh, the procedure used to convert from one unit of measurement to a different unit is called dimensional analysis. Dimension. These are dimensions. Centimeters, grams, or dimensions. So we're using, and if you set it up right, you can see that you always get the right answer you want. It grams here, tons here, even though I didn't know it. But you get the idea. See number. Um, oh, 
e a Rio Só. Filling the so continuing fractions have a rate meters and centimeters. Well, one meter equals 100 centimeters. So the two unit fractions are going to be this one and just flip them. And you get that one. Both of the two unit fractions. Both of those are equal to one as a value. Oh. Okay. So that's the idea. We're converting from kilograms to pounds, so let's look it up. Let's see which one they're going to use here. Sometimes they're a little bit different. You know, I, 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 I was saying earlier that oh, one kilogram is 2.2 .2 pounds, and I'll show you why that's true. But on here, it's point, point four five four. Kilograms is one pound. So that's the one we're going to look for. When we're converting from kilograms to pounds, then the pounds is in the numerator. Because we want to end up with pounds. So because the kilograms are canceled. So the kilograms have to be in the denominator. So that's that. And now they're going to ask me to go in the other direction to go from pounds to kilograms. All I've got to do is find that one and flip it. So it'll be right there. Okay. Now, so what I said earlier that you can also have a unit fraction 2.2 .2 pounds equals one kilogram. Well, if I just take one divided by 0.454, go off the page. See, there's 2.2. .2. So that's two, 2 divided by 1. You can look at this as a fraction. We don't know how to write it over 1. So that's a different unit fraction. But the dimension in the numerator is pounds, and the dimension in the denominator is kilograms, because you know what I started with. 1 pound is 0. 0.454 kilograms. That's how I came up with 2, 2 pounds over 1 kilogram. But you don't for completeness write that down. The denominator is always supposed to be one. Let's see what happens if I do 0.45. Yeah, it's a little bit bigger, but 2.2. So still 2.2. All right. So 7, 9. I think probably. Because this is gallons to liters. So I think it's 3.8 liters to a gallon, right? Where is it volume? See, 3.79 on here. I think they're going to do 3.8. Whatever they give you on the, the uh, Pearson, the my math lab, use that. See, they use 3.8. So we're going from gallons to liters, so liters is in the numerator. So it's this one. And to going from liters to gallons, you just flip it. So it'll be this one. Notice how the distractors, they give you all these distractors with the same numbers, but they mix up the dimension. So look at both. Because I almost picked the third one, which would be one liter to 3.8 gallons. I saw the one over 3.8, but they, they switched the dimensions also. So be careful. You get in a hurry. All right, so now we're going to actually change 15 pounds to how many kilograms. Well, the kilograms goes in the numerator. So if you look above, it's it's going to be a uh, multiplication because the 0.45 is in the numerator. So it's a multiplication. You see what I mean? So I mean, you can write these out, but after a while, you, you catch on pretty quick. So we got 15 pounds, and we want to change that to kilograms, so the kilograms have to go in the numerator. That's the only way you can cancel pounds. So they give it to you as an equality, and you're turning it into a fraction. You just have to make up your mind where does the, where does which one goes in the numerator, and then based on what what the value is, it's either a multiplication, or if, if we were going the other direction, then it would be a division. So for this one, it's a multiplication. 
So it's 15 times point, so yeah, 0.45. And they want us to round to the nearest hundred, so 6.75. So let's see. It's just centimeters. So centimeters in the numerator, so it's 2.54 in the numerator, so it's a multiplication. So 8 times 2.54. I always say two and a half centimeters per inch. That's where it comes from. Nearest hundred, 20.32. Okay. Oh, am I going fast? All right. Next one is grams per ounce. So ounces is in the numerator, so it's a multiplication. I'm sorry, ounces is in the numerator, so it's a division. I said, right? If I want ounces in the numerator, it's one ounce divided by 28 grams. So gas is grams, it's a division. So 145. Divided by 28. The nearest tenth would be 5.2. Notice how they change from 100 to, no, it's just nearest 100. 1.8. I almost blew that. Yeah, 1.8. Okay, uh, 15, 16, or 15. Kilograms to pound. So this time, the pounds is in the numerator, so this one is a division. So it's 76 divided by 24. Which is still a down there. So it'll be 76 divided by 24. Did you need me to write them out, or do you follow what I'm doing here? No, okay. I have to make sure that it's dividing them up. Oh. So it's not letting me follow on the. Yeah, I'm like, I'm following I have all the screen now. What's the other thing? Okay, so it's 100 once again. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is uh, area. So we're going to change 25 square yards to how many square meters. Well, the square meters is in the numerator, which means the point, not point zero nine is in the numerator. Oops, the point, point eight is in the numerator. You can change the meter squared to yard, or vice versa, yard squared to meter squared. So this goes down. So the point eight's in the numerator, so it's point eight times 25. So 20. Once again, if you, if you write if you, if you write enough of these out, you'll get it. 25 yard squared. So I want to change that to meter squared, so it's 0.8 meters squared per yard squared. That's the only way to cancel that. That's why the meters is a numerator. That's why it's a multiplication. Notice they said to the nearest hundred, but I it was a perfect uh, integer, 20. I didn't have to write 20.00, which is okay. 17. 52 miles to how many kilometers? This is a multiplication. The kilometers are numerator, so it's multiplied by 1.6. This is in the numerator. You get the kilometers. You cancel the miles. One mile will be the denominator. So 20, 50, 52 times uh, 1.6. That would be 83 point two. Once again, I only have one decimal place. They, they accept it. They don't need, they don't need me to write the extra zero. Isn't that nice of them? 19. Hectares to acres. So the acres is in the numerator. So it's a division. See, this one goes down. You cancel the hectares. So it's a division by 0.4. So 691. Yeah, 691 divided by 0.4. 17.5. I'm doing good today. Mm -hmm. Ounces to grams. So this is vice versa. Oh, this is this is liquid. What am I thinking of? No, is that right? Was it ounces to grams before? I forget. 
But the grams is in the numerator, so this time it's a multiplication. And the, the, the last, last time it was a division. <laughs> this time it's a multiplication because I want to get rid of the alpha, so the alpha goes to the denominator. That stays up there, so I'll, I'll be multiplying 20 times 28. 560? Yeah. Okay. And 24. You get the idea for these 60 we have to see. Okay. Middle leaders, is that script L instead of a capital L? Okay. Middle leaders to fluid ounces. So fluid ounces is in the numerator. So it's a division by 30. This goes downstairs to cancel the middle leaders. So it'll be 25.3 divided by 30. And it's to the nearest hundred, so it's 0.84 fluid ounces. Let's see, where are we at? 29. All right. So we got a bunch of bunch of numbers. They're all distracted. We have to pinpoint the one number we want, but make sure you understand that all these numbers are meters. Well, not these, but all the distance. You got you guys golfers? You ever been golfing? When you go to a golf course, there's there's different colored tee boxes. That they have either like round balls that they with a spike they put them in the ground, or they take a piece of four by four and paint it a color and put it. In the ground, that's where you tee off from. Okay. Either either be, between these two markers or within two yards behind it. But you got to be in that tee box. Well, there's different colors. Uh, the blue is the, is for the big guys, the pros, way back. And then there's um, white is for just uh, your uh, club members that don't want to try to hit it as far as the big guys. And then there's uh, green is for seniors. And then I guess they have different colors up there. And then the white or the red are the are ladies. Ladies tees are always up closer because ladies don't just don't hit it that far, typically. So that's the different colors, four different colors. You can see that for any given hole, they get smaller. See, they go from long, longest to shortest. So that's the idea. And they're given in meters here. Now this other stuff, that's, those are the whole numbers. Handicap means how difficult the holes are. Par, you know what par means, right? So what's your, par is how many strokes you expect to use typically on the hole. There's par threes, fours, and fives. And a par three is a short one. When you hit your shot, you're supposed to land on the green. And every hole has, you're getting, you get two putts. So this short hole, you, you, par three, you expect to hit your tee shot on the green and two putts, so that's three is your par score. Okay. If you get one less, that's a burden. If you get two less, it's an eagle. If you get one more, it's a bogey and double bogey. <laughs> anyway, any, anyway, that's what this is, that's a scorecard. Mm -hmm. So they want for hole number four from the white tees, 377 is the only number we care about. Yeah. And it's in meters, we want to change it to feet. So that would be 0 0.305. If we're going to change the meters to feet, we're dividing. The meters goes into the denominator. Okay. Cancel the meters to get the feet. So it'd be 377 divided by 0 0.305. Long story short. So 12.36. Point zero seven. Twelve thirty-six point zero seven. Okay. By the way, this the column would have front nine and the back nine. There'd be eighteen holes. Yeah, that, that I know. So that, that I know. Yeah, I know. Eighteen holes. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> the handicaps go from one to eighteen. Usually, uh, the one side is the odds. You know, the other side is even. And the reason they give you handicaps, just so you know, is if you're playing with somebody and you have an established handicap score, like I typically shoot 
10 over par and you shoot 20 over par, then you get 10 strokes from me. And you get them on the numbers 1 through 10 you know, on the handicap. On the other holes, we play even, even speed. So you get an extra you get an extra shot. In other words, we reduce your score by one, one shot to give you a chance to, to, to beat me or to time me. To time you. Time <laughs> Kind of I think we're going to go to the golf range and just map a couple of There you go. That, I, I don't know Top about, flight. Yeah, that's it. Just get some stress out and just go to one of those swings. I know. That's a good thing to do. Yeah, go to the top flight. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You're not chasing balls. Exactly. That's exactly what they're thinking. I know. Don't they, don't, don't they give you electronically how far it went and everything? Oh, I've never been there. Oh, yeah. I, I think that's what they do. Yeah. I thought you had. I'd been there and I was offered the chance, but I just. I wasn't in the mood, so I didn't do it. Anyway. Let's see. Mr. S Mrs. Smith wants to buy floor covering for her master bedroom. The dimensions of the master bedroom are 12 yards by 8 yards. The floor covering sold in square meters. How many square meters a floor covering will she need? So you're All right. Multiply the square yards first. Right. So we got 96 square yards. Well, let's turn up the meters, so uh, the meters stays in the numerator. So it's a multiplication by 0.8. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And we'd probably add 10%, but because nothing's ever perfect when you're dealing with parts. Yeah. But we're just answering their question. <laughs> <laughs> Bodily home <laughs> so, yeah. Always my extra. Yeah, yeah, I can guarantee you. Yeah. Well, yeah, because if you, if you, if you run out, the chances especially of Especially when you're in the middle of trying to finish something. Oh, no, no, no. When all of a sudden the color changes, I was just thinking, you lost me. Right. <laughs> right around. Yeah. So four grams of gold were used to coat a pair of shoes. What? Interesting. Yes. Yeah. That's one seventh of an ounce. You know how much? You know how much an ounce of gold is going for nowadays? No. For gold bullion, over two thousand dollars an ounce. Man. A toy ounce. Toy ounce is a little bigger than a regular ounce. Toy ounce is about 30, 31 point something grams. A regular ounce is twenty eight grams. So, but that's going to be like one one tenth to one twelfth. Well, not one tenth, but twelve uh, percent of a, of a one eighth of a of a. That's like two hundred and fifty dollars a bowl coat of pair of shoes. Damn, that's going to be very cheap. Yeah. Anyway, how many ounces of gold? Uh, this is going to be what? The, the division. Because the ounce stays in the numerator. So it's 4 divided by 28. It's actually 1 7 of an ounce. So to the nearest 100 would be 0.14. Now, I, I, I follow silver and gold on the, on the market just about every other day. So if I multiply this, the current price today was two thousand and sixty dollars for an ounce. So it's closer to three hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Huh? Pair of shoes? Yeah. 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 And then you have to buy the shoes that you're playing on Exactly. Mm -hmm. it's way too much. That's a whole day of work. Yes, sure is. That's no. And this is how women think. This is exactly how we're thinking. Oh my God, that's a lot of gold. We can then just shoot. So you got to have good shoes to put all that gold on. You don't have to work to actually buy. No, no. That's a whole shift. No. A large national park has an area of 91,891 acres. What's the area in hectares? This time it's going to be a multiplication. Because the hectare stays in the numerator, so it's a multiplication mm -hmm. times 0.4. See, the last number is the opposite. 
we have enough of these where we see it all depends on on what you're changing to it could be either a multiplication or a division so times 24 so it's 36,756.4 hectares Uh, 39 plastic bottles recycled annually in general stores at a certain national park would reach a height of 1,450,000 feet to stack end to end. What is this distance in meters? I think who cares? No. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually answered my head. <laughs> so this is what? A multiplication, right? Now we don't they don't give us the table, that's why I give you this. So for length, uh, one foot is uh, 0.305 meters. So if I'm going to meters, it's a multiplication. So I take 1,450,000 times 0 0.305. So it's 40, 440. 2,250 meters a kilometer. So that's pretty easy. Kilometers, you just move it three decimal places to the left. So 442.25 kilometers. Right? Mm -hmm. That just goes back to what we did last time. So the first one was going across the two, two different systems. The second one, B, was staying within the metric system. That was 40. Oh. A tank truck holds 34.5 kiloliters of oil. How many gallons does it hold? So if I'm a, if I'm going to go to gallons from kiloliters, notice I don't have kiloliters up there. I have liters. So this one you probably want to do on the side. This is a true. This will be, show you the true value of dimensional analysis. So we're starting with 34.5 kilometers, and we could we could just do this real easy. We could say it's a thousand liter kilometers, and then we want to change liters to gallons. So the liters to gallons, one gallon is 3.8 liters. See, liters cancels, kiloliters cancels. And I'm left with gallons. So let's multiply this by 1,000 and then divide by 3.8. This is the true worth of dimensional analysis. The reason I wrote it down is because now I have three things, three, three dimensions. Because the table doesn't give me kiloliters and gallons, it only gives me liters. So let's see, 34.5 times a thousand divided by three point eight. Uh, nearest hundred, so it's nine nine thousand point nine five, right? Yeah. Fantastic. That is what it kept this happens a lot in chemistry and physics, dimensional analysis. See, I didn't do anything numerically until I made sure I had the right dimension at the end that I wanted. I wanted gallons to there. Any questions about that? Are we good? Mm -hmm. Here's the one you couldn't get. One meter is about 23 feet. What's the equivalent of one square meter? Three point three square. Three point three square. Three point three on each side. That's what I couldn't figure out. If it wanted that answer or if it wanted just the one square foot equals that's why I kept messing it up. No, one square meter is three point three feet on a side. Okay. Yeah, all, what they're see what they're doing is they're saying, okay. Here's your square meter. But if this is 3.3 feet, how many square feet is that? 
So it's 3.3 times 3.3 feet squared. 10.89. Now, what's the cubic? Well, I need to, I just need to multiply by another 3.3. That'll give me the, the height. I have the length and the width. So now the height. 35.937. Notice I don't round anything off. They, they didn't tell me to, so I don't do it. It just says type it in your decimal, so I don't round. It'll it'll mark it wrong most likely. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. If you could, if you have a chance to redo that one. It does. It lets me redo it. If you have a chance, I'm not saying it will, but. It was learning me. Okay, then you know what to do now. Okay. Uh, that was 44. Let me know when I'm when you're good. Yeah. Thank okay. you. 51. I mean, it gives you different numbers, so you know what, at least let me try it again. Yeah. The label on a bottle of medicine reads each five milliliter teaspoon contains those th uh, three different types of medication glucose, levulose, and phosphoric acid. So, for part A, find the amount of phosphoric acid in the recommended dosage of two teaspoons. Well, that's easy. That's just two times. 21.2, right? Mm -hmm. All right, that's the easy one. 2 times 21.2, 42.4. No round off. Okay. Now, if a bottle contains four ounces, find the quantity of phosphoric acid in the bottle. Well, each ounce is 30 milliliters, which is six tablespoons. So that's 24 tablespoons. Or teaspoons. Mm -hmm. Once again, we can do the. Uh, we have four ounces. There's uh, 30 milliliters per ounce. So that'll cancel the ounces. And there's one teaspoon of five milliliters. And one teaspoon is also the uh, oh. Uh, there's uh, 21.2 milligrams per teaspoon for that. Time. So this this cancels with that. So it's four times six times 21.2. See, I, I wasn't really sure where, where I was going. I just started. What, what we got? We got four ounces. Then they tell me there's 30 milliliters per ounce. And then there's one teaspoon for five milliliters, which is a dose. Mm -hmm. And there's 21.2 milligrams per teaspoon. So I can cancel teaspoons, milliliters, ounces, and I'm left with milligrams of phosphoric acid. So that'll be 24 times 21.2. 508.8. Now, notice. I actually went the long way because I could have just done this. I could have said four ounces. Oh, in an ounce, there's 30 milliliters. That's six teaspoons. There's, so there's 24 teaspoons. That's 24 uh, doses. I could have said, well, 24 times 21.2. I could have reasoned it out, but this, there's no doubt about how I got to, a, to that same place logically through dimensional analysis. It's kind of fail safe because you know you cancel all the dimensions that were from your start to your finish. I, I didn't write phosphoric acid there, but that's what that means. That's that, that's the only mass that we were interested in. Okay. okay. All right. Fifty-three. 
Okay, a roadrunner has been recorded as reaching speeds as high as 49 kilometers per hour, although it normally runs at 39 kilometers per hour. An Olympic runner has a record speed of running about 28.41 miles per hour. So if we use the 39 kilometers per hour for the roadrunner, who runs faster, the roadrunner or the Olympic? What do you suppose that there's differences between the two speeds? They're reaching the high speed is the sprint that that roadrunner sprints. The 39 is just cruising. Okay, that's what I would. So if he's cruising, who would be faster, the Olympian or the roadrunner? What do you say? So we know that the Olympian is 28.41 miles per hour, so we got to change the 39 kilometers per hour to miles per hour. And so that would be. Uh, Divided because I'm, if I'm going to change from kilometers to miles, the 1.6 goes in the denominator to cancel. So it's 39 divided by 1.6. 24. And notice, oh, there's 100. Okay, so 24.38. And so the Olympians faster. Of course, they only have one speed for the Olympian, so that's probably a straight out dash speed, like in a hundred meter dash. Now, what do you, who do you suppose is faster if you use the sprint speed for the uh, road Probably the road runner, yeah, because, because if I take 49 divided by 1.6, that's going to be a, a lot higher than you know, 30.63. 30 so now, Using that, the roadrunner would be faster. So we didn't we didn't really have to mess with it. we since we have two the two speeds for the roadrunner we could change them to uh, yeah and we, we changed it to the miles per hour because that's what they were asking for. I could have changed that to kilometers per hour and just looked at both of them. Then I only only had to do one calculation, but they wanted to know miles per hour for the roadrunner, so we had to do both calculations. So let's see what that is. Uh, if I go the other direction, if I want to change miles per hour to kilometers per hour, that's a multi that's a multiplication. So I, if I take the 28.41 times the 1.6, you can see that in kilometers per hour, the Olympian is between the 39 and the 45, which makes sense. They didn't ask me for that, but just so you can see the, the totality of, of, the, of the problem. We can write. We can write an essay on it. All right. So this one, it's really straightforward. It it throws you a, a little bit if you think about it too much. But what they're asking for is the kilometers to one. They want to know how many kilometers per hour to one knot. You know what a knot is, by the way. I know that seems like. Yeah, nautical miles, nautical miles per hour. Yeah. A nautical mile is 6,000 feet. A statute mile is 5,280 feet. The reason nautical mile is, is, is 6,000 feet is because it fits in better with the meridian, the meridian line. Because there's 60 miles between meridian lines. Or six, I'm sorry, 660 miles, something like that. Anyway, because it's a, it's a better multiple for the six. But uh, there, uh, when you say you're going 10 knots, you're actually going faster than statute miles, miles per hour. Yeah, you're, you're going a little faster, something like that. So they write KNOT here. I've, I've always seen an NAUT, not for nautical. So that's what they mean by that. And the KTH is kilometers per hour, and MTH is miles per hour. So what they want, they, this is what they want. Well, all we really have to do is to take, if we take the kilometers per hour at 920 and the knots are what? 500. When I do this division, 
I'm, I'm essentially dividing both of these by 500. 500 over 500 is 1, and 920 over 500 is the number I put here. So instead of having this as my unit fraction, we get it to where we have a 1 in the denominator for our unit fraction. So all we have to do is just do that division. And that'll be the new, that'll be the answer of the numerator. It's, it's not straightforward. It seems complicated. So I just take 920 and divide by 500. 1.84 to the nearest hundred. See, those are equivalent fractions. Though. The ratio of this to this is 1.84 to 1. Right? Because there it is. What's the denominator of the number 1.84? 1. .84? one. And, uh, it's, un it's unspoken. We can kind of forget it. But when you need it, it's always there. Like when you do slope, if you say the slope is equal to 2, well, it's actually 2 over 1. Because yeah. you need it. You need, you need that. Yeah, because you gotta have a run, you got to have a run, and then the run has to be 1. So. Okay, now they're going to do it for the second one. So now it's going to be not. Which is 500, and we're going to divide by miles per hour, which is 575. So the numerator is 0.87. Which makes it nice if you think about it. When you do, when you if you have a unit fraction where one of your dimensions has a one, then it's always going to be a, a multiplication or a division when you're doing a change from one dimension to another. Because if I use the 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 mechanism on the far left, then I got to do a multiplication and a division all the time, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you just do it once, and now you have the ratio, and you need the one of them at one. Whatever. And you can turn this around. You could do one over 1.84 if you want. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. Wow. Oh, I see. And then the last one is. Uh, Miles per hour would be 575, and the kilometers per hour would be 920. So that last one would be 0.63 to the nearest hundred. So you guys are now set for. Yay. We're done with the uh, metric. Uh, let's just look real quick. Look at. Some of the deadlines. I know we mentioned them before. Uh, we got a weekend. Uh, we're not going to do homework uh, homework six till Monday, and homework six won't be due until Wednesday. Okay. Final final day would be Friday, but by Wednesday, and then test number two it opens up Sunday, but it's not due until next Friday. And or Sunday, you can actually bring it all the way to. In other words, we we have to slow down because we miss we miss we miss yeah. this Monday and back everything up a little bit. But that's okay because there's there's plenty of room wiggle room in, in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, which is good. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, we'll we'll be done with homework nine on a week from Monday. So the Tuesday and Thursday in the last fourth week will be all reviewed. Oh, okay. And okay. Usually the, the last Thursday we meet online. Oh, okay. All you got to do is meet me online, say hello, ask any questions. I'll answer your questions and then I'll mark you. Tuesday could be the same way, but we'll wait until we see where everything's at. But you may want to come in and ask questions. It depends on how you pick up the finances. Right. Yeah, those are a little harder. Yeah, I never. But I don't give you a formula for the calculator. Oh, okay. Because I'll show you. I'll show you what happens. Like for, for compound interest, we say that the future value, which we call a accumulated value, is equal to the present value or the principal times 1 plus r over m raised to the n to the power. And that's kind of difficult to put in the calculator unless you know, let's do it this way. 
I'll give you this formula. See, now, now you have all the parentheses, and now the order of operations won't be violated, so that you can, instead of trying to figure out what, and some of the other ones are, are complicated also, which we get into annuities, uh, uh, long-term loans, more, you know, monthly payments for mortgages and whatnot. So those formulas, when you write them out, there's these huge multi numerators and denominators. This one doesn't even have a denominator. You can see I, I've got to add a bunch of parentheses just to make sure that it works right. But that's what I'll do. I'll give you a flow sh a, a sheet with all the all of them printed out for the calculator, so you you won't have to figure out oh, do I need the parentheses there or not. It'll be all you got to do is figure out these values and what they mean. R is the annual interest rate. N is the number of compoundings per, per year. T is the number of years. I told you present value, future value, or uh, we call it cumulated value, or future value, and stuff like that. So once you know all the lingo, then it's pretty simple just to get the right formula. Just to plug it in. Yeah. Yep. yep. Okay. All right. So I will see you all on Monday. Thanks for coming. Absolutely. Thank you. Have a good weekend, Jay. Any questions? Okay. 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 So I tried to work ahead as much as I could because I figured that way. Right. At least I'll meet the deadline with the assignment that, that I have coming up. Right. So are you going to be taking this, this statistics class also? Yes, I am. Do you know when? Uh, yes, I do. Um, are you teaching the statistics class? Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank God. I just want to let you know it. <laughs>